What's up guys, Chris Schwartz Edmondson here from Schwartz Edmondson Web Design. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to reorder blocks on the mobile view in Squarespace 7.1. A common layout that you'll probably design is having an image on the left and then content on the right and then doing the reverse down below where you have content on the left and an image on the right. But the problem is that content stacks for mobile view from left to right. So here we'll have the image stack above the content as we get down to mobile. But because this content comes before the image on the left and the image is on the right, this content is going to stack above this image on mobile. And so what that layout gives us is then we have image, content, and then content, and then image. But oftentimes it's preferable to have the image always above the content. So that's what we're going to be looking at today. We're going to be looking at how to change the order of the blocks on mobile and get this image to appear above our section. Now, you might be thinking, well, why don't you just use an image card block? because the image always will appear above the content. And the reason we can't do that in this case is because we wanna have our icon up here above the text and you can't add an icon to the image card block. You're restricted to just the image, the text, and then a button. So if you wanna do this layout and you don't want the icon, then I would recommend using the image card block, but you might have a different use case where again, you wanna reorder your blocks on mobile. So this will, also help you hopefully for those situations as well. So um, let's go ahead and jump into the structure of the page. I'll right click on the page and click inspect. And uh, as I've talked about before in other videos, Squarespace organizes its content into rows and columns. So here we can see we have a row and if I toggle it open, we have two columns. We have an, two SQS column sixes. So Squarespace uses a 12 column system, meaning basically it can have up to 12 columns next to each other. And since we only have two columns here, each of them get a number six. So basically any number of columns next to each other, they all have to add up to 12. So since we have two next to each other, each of these gets an SQS column six class added to it. So if I come down here to the next row, so we have this row, this is our top content. We then have a row which just has a spacer block in it. Um, so it gets an SQS column 12, which tells us that it's a full width column and we have a spacer block full width in that row. So if we come down here to the next row in this section, we again, we have two columns next to each other. So they both get an SQS column six class. Now, because all of these columns are the same size, we have two columns here, or we have a column next to each other down below, and we have a column next to each other up here. There isn't really a good way to only target this one column and move it above the column before it because they're all within the same section. So the first thing that we'll have to do is we'll have to move this content down here into its own section. So that way we can limit our CSS to just uh, the one section that contains this content. So that's the first um, critical thing that we have to do is we have to move this content into its own section. So luckily it's pretty easy to do that since Squarespace just introduced uh, duplicating content uh, within a section or duplicating sections. So I can click that copy button and it copies it down below. And now I'm just gonna delete all of the content uh, that we'll already have up above in that first section. Cool, so now we have this content in its own section and then I can delete all of this bottom content from this section because I only need the content, the top content in this section. Okay. So now I have uh, this content that we're gonna actually be writing the CSS for isolated to its own section. So now it'll be um, easy to write specific CSS just for this content to switch the order of those columns. The first thing that we wanna do though is we have a bunch of space here between these two sections because we have the space, the padding on the bottom of this section and the padding on the top of this section. 
So what we'll first want to do is go ahead and target this bottom section and let's just remove the, the top padding from it. So I'll right click and click inspect. And then you can see the content wrapper class, all of that green, that's all the padding that's on the section that we're going to be getting rid of. But I have to first target this section by its data section ID. And the data section ID is specific to this one section. And now I can target that content wrapper class. So I'm just going to copy that. And now within this data section, I'll open up some curly brackets and we'll target the content wrapper class and we'll give it a padding top of zero. Now I need to go ahead and give it an important tag. So I have to spell it right. And if I reload the frame, let's see if that did in fact work. And now, yes, it did. So now our content is much closer up to the top section because we've gotten rid of all of that padding that was on the content wrapper. So now you can see no more green on top. There's no more padding on top. So if we wanted to get them closer together, then I could also remove the padding from the bottom of this section. Um, but I don't mind. I don't mind this amount of space. I think it's kind of nice for them to not be too close together. I, I want it to have a little breathing room, so I'm going to go ahead and leave that for now. But if you did want to remove the padding bottom from this section, you would just target its data section ID and then target the content wrapper and change the padding bottom to zero. So uh, let's go ahead and flip it down to mobile view and. We can see that when I inspect the page, the two columns are stacking on top of each other. So we have our SQS column six here on top, and then we have our SQS column six on the bottom here, and they're both residing within this row in this section. So we also have this row up here. Um, not too worried about that one. It has a column zero. Sometimes Squarespace will, when you have like deleted blocks and stuff, it'll put a column zero, uh, which is basically just a blank column, which is kind of strange. But on the live site, I'm pretty sure that will be removed. Um, so I'm not too worried about that row. So what we can do is we can change this row that's containing both of our columns in this section. We're going to give it a display of flex, and then we can uh, reorder the stacking order of these two columns. And we're basically going to say, change the second SQS column six in this row to actually be on top of the first SQS column six. So um, we already have the data section ID targeted here. So within this closing curly bracket, I'm going to target our SQS row and I'm going to give it a display of flex. Now um, we lost our image because by default, the flex direction, when you give an object a display of flex, it goes to row, but we want the content to stack on, on top of each other. So we're gonna give it a flex direction of column. There we go. Uh, and now we get our image back. But instead of doing a regular column, we're going to say column reverse. And so that switches the stacking order of the flex items in that section. So we're now getting our image on top of our content just in this one section. Uh, the problem is we've uh, not we're not limiting this to mobile. This is applying to desktop as well. So what we need to do is wrap this CSS in a media query uh, to make sure that we're only applying that one change to mobile. So I'm just going to write at media screen. And and then we'll give it a max width. Um, and what we need to do first is find the exact media query that we're going to use. And I have a feeling it's probably going to be 767 pixels. So let me just set up this media query and then we'll find the exact uh, width that we need, screen width that we need to set the media query for. 
So I'm just going to find out when exactly these columns stack on top of each other. Um, so I'll right click and I'll inspect. And then we can go to a column in here and we can see that uh, they have a media query set up for a max width of 767 pixels. And that's when the width uh, goes full width and then they don't float next to each other anymore. So this is the, the media query width at which they stack on top of each other. And that's when we want this Flexbox to apply. So I have set up my screen width to be the correct width. So we're good there. Um, so we have our media query set up. So now if I go back to desktop, everything looks exactly the same as it did before. But now as we shrink down the screen, when our items go to stack on top of each other, we're now getting image, content, image, content. So that's how you can change the stacking order of items on mobile. Basically, the first thing you have to do is make sure that the content is within its own section, and that way you can limit this CSS to just that one section. Because if we had written this CSS without limiting it to this section, then all of this content would have been reversed as well. And really, every column in every row on the website would have been reversed. So this makes it specific just to this one section. Uh, the next thing that we did is we got rid of the padding top on this section because there was too much space between our items. So that just makes it look like they're back within the same section. Next, uh, we targeted the SQS row that both columns were sitting in. We gave a display of flex and then a flex direction of column reverse. So, and then we limited that styling to only apply to screen sizes of 767 pixels or less. And that way, um, it's not applying until everything stacks on top of each other. And then that's when our blocks are reordering. And really, it's not the blocks that we're reordering. Because Squarespace organizes its content into columns and rows, we're actually reordering the columns, not the blocks themselves. So that is how you reorder blocks on mobile in Squarespace 7.1. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe. If you're interested in creating more custom layouts in Squarespace, I have a course that's linked in the description below called Custom Layouts in Squarespace, and it's all about creating more advanced designs in Squarespace. So highly recommend you check out the free training in the description below if you're interested in creating more custom layouts in Squarespace. All right, that's it for me. I'll see you in the next one.